Hi, now we're on to part two of how to end a biopulsar session. So when you're ending a session, there's a couple things that you have to think about. One, you always have to dedicate a few minutes to the end to sort of give clients solutions to their conditions, um, you know, things that they can do. You'll also want to do product recommendations, as well as you're going to want to tell them if you're teaching any classes or attending any events or working out of you know, other facilities so they can rebook themselves or book another session with you. Now, this is really important to sort of time yourself doing these different things. So I actually program my iPhone, um, you know, to seven minutes if I'm doing a little introductory session somewhere where I'm offering, you know, 10 minute readings for $20. Sometimes I'll even do five minute readings by donation. And that's been really successful because people feel that they get a lot of value out of the reading and they want to give you money. And at the very least, they'll buy a lot of product from you too. And that's what you've got to think about is, how are you going to end the session to keep the client interested in coming back? Well, you have to set that stage. That's really important. So when I'm doing a reading, whether it's a 10-minute reading or a half-hour reading or a one-hour reading, I reserve the back end of the reading to go over these things. So for example, all my readings... I'm going to suggest all the different things that a client can do to strengthen their energy. So for example, if they're low in red energy, I'm going to recommend, oh, you need to do color baths because when you're lying in that pool of colored water, then that's a half hour you're programming your body, mind, and spirit with one vibration. That's power. And if you add oils and hold a gemstone while you're in the bath or do an affirmation or a visualization or maybe you want to listen to my red meditation CD, all these things will actually make that color bath direct the energy into your body, mind and spirit to really empower you. Um, likewise, you can suggest that they wear more red clothing, maybe red underwear. Um, I always have stones in my pocket because I want to stay grounded throughout the whole day. And in fact, I start a lot of my days doing an abundance of red oils and essences just to make sure that I don't run out of steam during the day. And if you know me, you know I put in a lot of hours. I love what I do, don't get me wrong, but I always make sure I prepare my day. Now there's a whole bunch of oils that are listed here, some of Color Energy's famous blends as well as single note oils. Any of these can be recommended and sometimes I'll have a client going, oh, I have that oil at home. I go, awesome. You know, please put that in your diffuser, put it on the soles of your feet, you know, use it as much as possible so you're bringing in that vibration. On here, we're also listing color energy alchemy essences. And in some of our videos, we go more into the essences, but I want you to know the essences are super embedded and they're cosmic tools. So they last for a very long time, unlike some earth energy tools that expire very quickly and don't have the same effect energetically. Also, I list a whole bunch of foods here so people can then focus on eating that food. And this is why people crave foods because their body's crying out, eat this because there's some sort of nutritional value that can help them. Herbs and spices, minerals, vitamins, the gemstone connection on here, even talking about music therapy or the different types of music that will help stimulate, for example, to stimulate the root chakra, the beating of those primal drums, that's enough to get your energy going in the morning. And in fact, that's also on our red energy um, meditation CD where you're really listening to the playing of drums. Also, exercises, the Tibetan Five Rites, the different type of yoga that can help, you know, physical activity. And even dancing is a good red energy exercise. Also, there's that physical connection. And the way I created this sheet, it's got little boxes so you can check off what it is that you're recommending um, that you carry. So even if a client doesn't buy something that day, they can come back to you on another day and purchase more items from you, especially if they come back for a rescan and they see that that chakra hasn't moved a lot. And you've got to remember when it comes to the root, the root is the densest and the slowest chakra to move. So sometimes people have to spend months rebuilding their root. Um, also, other treatments, I tell people, you know, especially women, get a pedicure, put some red nail polish on your toes, 
a hand or a, a foot reflexology bath um, or treatment, a chiropractic adjustment, and different types of nutrition will help support the different chakras and the different organs. So you want to recommend as much as you can to the client and then also take them through a couple products of how they can use it successfully. Because the more you set your client up for success, the more likely they will succeed. Um, also, I let people know what's next. What's next is booking another session. Because I tell everyone, this is a baseline. We just got a snapshot of where you are right now. When we do a second scan, we build a better and bigger portfolio on your energy and we can really isolate wow, these organs are still weak or still hyperactive. Look at the colors in your aura the same, or no, they've totally changed. This way we can educate people on how their energy is stagnating or moving. This is so important because we have to understand consciousness is key in any healing. So we have to educate people on that. So you really want to hit it home that to get that second and third scan is invaluable because they'll really start to understand more about their energy. And let them know about any classes that you have. I actually tell people, I have a class on this date and this is what the cost is, but I have limited seats. Can I count you in? And so right away, you can start putting their name down and say, I'll let you know, I'll remind you about the event before it happens. So again, either if they haven't booked at that time, you're reminding them to come. And even if they've booked, again, you're reminding them to come. And I have emails set up that you can send clients to remind them of these things. And also, it's important for either a follow-up call or a follow-up email. So again, you can reiterate some of the information you've given the client and again, let them know about the next steps of what they need to do. I hope this was helpful. And remember, more videos are coming.